Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. So earlier this week, Grandstream released their own video showing how to control IoT devices, mainly IP cameras using RTSP with their PBX 6300 series. And when they did the video in their demo, they were using their own Grandstream cameras as well. Now it got me to thinking about, wow, maybe I can do this with my own camera, my own real link camera, as long as it supports RTSP, it should work. So why do I want to attempt this? And why do I want to test this? It's because I have a specific use case. I have two cameras in my backyard currently. They're Amcrest cameras and they're connected to Synology surveillance station 9.0. Now in my garage, I control my garage doors with the MyQ app and I never trust the status of the MyQ app fully. I thought, wow, how cool would it be to put in a camera in the garage? And I do have an ethernet port there that I installed when I built the house, just putting a camera there to shoot at the garage doors so that I don't have to trust the status of the MyQ app. I could simply just pull up the camera and see visually that the doors are closed. So I thought, wow, RTSP would work fine just for this. Let me see if I can get it to work. So if you're interested in seeing what I did, just stick around and I'm going to show you what I did to test it and we'll go from there. Okay. So the first thing I did was pull out my real link bullet camera. It's a RLC 510A. It was just laying in the drawer. I said, this will be a good camera to test with. And by default, let me go into the basic settings. Actually, let me go into the, just the settings in general and come down to network. By default, RTSP was disabled. So I came over to the network settings in the side corner here. And the first thing I did was come down to advanced settings and then under port settings, I clicked on setup and you can see here all the configuration specifics for all the different types of ports. Notice here, RTSP is turned on. I did turn that on. It was off by default. And when it's off by default, you can't client can't connect to RTSP onto this device. So I did leave the RTSP port at the default of 554. You could change it if you want, but I, this was just for testing purposes. So I left it at the default and then I hit the save button. That's all I had to do in the real link camera at this point. Let's flip over to the UCM and let me go to system status. I just want to show you something under system information. I'm running the 6302. And I just updated the firmware to version 1.0.15.10. I was running an earlier version and I just wanted to make sure I had the latest version in order to do this. Let's come over to device management and I'm going to click on IP cameras. And you can see here, I have one IP camera set up. Here's the RTSP URL. Let's click on the edit button so you can see exactly what I did. So under device number, you see here, I had 1006 and it's grayed out because it's now been assigned to this camera device. Now, I, I do want to make one thing clear here. Let's go back up to, let me just bring up the computer for a second. Let's just go back up to my extensions. And you can see in the list here, I have 203, 205, and then 1000 through 1004. Notice 1006 does not exist. So that said, let me just switch over to back to that screen here. That said, it's got to be an extension that doesn't exist. If it's, if you try to use an unused extension that's created here in the extensions list, you're going to get an error message when you're setting up your IP camera. So let's go back to device management, IP camera. Let's go back into the edit screen. And so you can see here, here's 1006. I just picked it because it was an extension that did not exist in the system. I just gave it a name. You can call it anything here. I called it test. The protocol is RTSP. That's the only one available at this point in time. You put in the IP address of the camera. So this is the IP address of the real link camera. And I would recommend that you assign your real link camera either a static IP address or you create a reservation in your router so that it doesn't change and the PBX will always be able to find it. Again, I left the port 
554 as the default port. Now this is the username and password of the actual camera itself. So the username for the real link camera is admin. And again, I was just testing this and the password is blank by default and the transmission protocol is UDP. And then down here you can pick the members or the other extensions on the PBX that you would like to give access to call into the camera. So for this demonstration, I just picked myself, but you can pick as many as the extensions that exist on your PBX. And then I just went ahead and I hit save. Now I got that configured and I went over to the wave app and I'm signed into my wave app. Now, I just want to mention, and let me bring this full screen for one second. I just want to mention that I'm signed into the Wave app using the GDMS cloud address, not the internal address of the actual PBX, because the thought process is when I'm away from my house, I want to be able to call into the camera. So by using GDMS cloud and remote connect, I'll be able to do that. So that said, I'm signed into the Wave app, and I'm going to demonstrate this with the Wave app on the computer. Let me just switch back to the Wave app there for you to see. I'm signed into the Wave app on the computer. This is the desktop version. And remember, it was extension 1006. So let's go ahead and type that in and hit. You're not going to hit the audio call. You're going to hit the video call button. And then again, you can see here, this is the image from the real link camera. Now, let me get out of here. I'm going to end this call. Let me get out of here and switch back to the main camera. Okay. So it's really that simple folks to do. One caveat though with this setup, and that is I could not get it to work on the mobile app, the Wave mobile app, the Grandstream Wave app on the phone. It does call into the camera and it does make the call successfully. In other words, it connects successfully. However, I don't get the video from the, the video feed from the real link camera. I'm just getting a blank screen. Now, come to think of it, when I watched the grand stream video last week, they did not demo it with their mobile app. They demoed it the same way as I did. They showed it using the wave desktop app. So honestly, I'm not sure if there's a issue with the wave app or um, they just haven't updated it yet, or maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm not sure at this point, I'm going to keep digging to see if I can get that to work because ultimately that's what I would love to do when I'm away from home, just have my phone call in using the wave app to the camera. I could be anywhere because I will use the address of the remote connect GDM GDMS cloud. And I should be at least able to pull up the real link camera that I'll station at that point in the garage so that I could visually see that my garage doors are either open or closed. And again, RTSP is fine for that use case application. So a quick update after one week of trying to troubleshoot the real link camera to get it to work when calling in from the mobile wave app on my iPhone. I spent a good part of the week troubleshooting every possible setting in that camera's UI from resolution to bit rate to frame rate, you name it. I went through that several times with a fine tooth comb, could not get a successful video RTSP stream to show up when calling in from the wave mobile app. So with that, I decided to try another camera. I added to, we're looking here at the grand stream PBX UI and I added the Amcrest backyard camera and here's the RTSP feed as you can see there. So what I'm going to do now, is switch over to the overhead camera because it does work with the Amcrest camera. So it's something specific to the real link camera that's not working. And I'll show you that when I switch to the overhead camera. So here we go. So I'm going to dial one zero zero seven 
which is the extension of the backyard Amcrest camera. We're going to go ahead and initiate the call. And there you can see right here, there's the backyard camera image. There's the RTSP feed. So let me cancel that. And now I'm going to dial 1006, which is the extension of the real link camera. And we're going to go ahead and initiate the call. And you'll see that the call connects. It made the connection to the camera, but you can see no video here. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but at least I know the concept works and I'll be able to utilize it without, obviously without the real link camera, but with another brand camera. So I just wanted to show you that as an update. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos that I have listed here up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share this video. And I want to thank you as I do in every video for using my Amazon affiliate links. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. And if you'd like, you can also support the channel. I have links to my Patreon page and PayPal down in the video description, along with a link to buy me a coffee if you feel so inclined. Once again, my name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, please stay safe. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.